Hello, everyone. Um, the group will be reporting on Republic Act 7610. The group is uh, comprising of Ms. Joy Tombo, Ms. Richa Perez, and myself, Scarlett Divina Gracia. Now, Republic Act 7610 is an act providing for stronger deterrence and special protection against child abuse, exploitation, and discrimination, and for other purposes. Now let's hear from Miss um, Joy Tombo, who will be talking about the overview. For the overview of our report, first we will be discussing the definition of terms under Section 3 of RA 7610, followed by child prostitution and other sexual abuse, attempt to commit child prostitution, child trafficking, attempt to commit child trafficking, obscene publication and indecent shows, employment of children, and finally we will also discuss uh, we also discussed two cases pertaining to this topic. The next slide will be discussed by Lisa Perez. So to provide a brief background of Republic Act 7610, on June 17, 1992, to comply with the mandate of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, the government enacted RA 7610. Uh, and although RA 7610 was lauded for its innovative provisions that it introduced for the protection of children in especially difficult circumstances, it was nevertheless severely criticized for its provisions on working children, which abruptly changed the entire Philippine policy of prohibiting child labor. Because under Article 8, Section 12 of RA 7610, it legalized the employment of all children below 15 years of age, provided only that the employer first secures a work permit from the DOLE or Department of Labor and Employment and ensures the protection of the child. So before we go get uh, deeper into discussion, now let's first discuss the definition of terms. This will be shared by Ms. Carla Divinagracia. Hi again, everyone. Let me talk about the definition of terms. Child abuse is a grave societal concern that poses a significant threat to the well-being and future of children. Just recently, as March 2022, legal measures have been updated and implemented to protect children from abuse and neglect. Now, what do you mean when you say children? Children refers to person below 18 years of age or those over but are unable to fully take care of themselves or protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability or condition. Basically, a person can be treated as a child within the confines of the law if the person is below 18 years of age, over 18 years of age, but is unable to take care or protect himself from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability. Now let's go to child abuse. Child abuse refers to the maltreatment, whether habitual or not, of the child, which, which includes any of the following. First is the psychological and physical abuse, neglect, cruelty, sexual abuse, and emotional maltreatment. Next is any act by deeds or words which debases or degrades or demeans the child. Next is the unreasonable deprivation of his basic needs for survival, such as food and shelter. There is also the failure to immediately give medical treatment to an injured child, resulting in, in serious impairment of his growth and development, or in his permanent incapacity or death. Simplifying child abuse, it is an any act which inflicts physical or psychological injury, cruelty to or the neglect of, or the neglect, sexual abuse or of, or of which exploit, exploits a child. So far, there is no single document which lists all acts and conditions prejudicial to the child's development. Now, Article, uh, Republic Act 7610 gives a peep of these acts wherein a, a child's development is compromised. Various acts and conditions which affect a child, the development of a child are mentioned in Section 3, Paragraph C of Republic Act 7610. 
circumstances which greatly threaten or endanger the survival and normal development of children include but are not limited to the following. Being in a community where there is armed conflict or being affected by armed conflict-related activities, working under conditions hazardous to life, safety, and normal which unduly interfere with their normal development, living in or fending for themselves in the streets of urban or rural areas without the care of parents or a guardian or basic services needed for a good quality of life. Being a member of the indigenous cultural community or living under conditions of extreme poverty or in area which is underdeveloped or lacks or has an inadequate access to basic services needed for a good quality of life. Being a, being a victim of a man-made or natural disaster or calamity, circumstances analogous to those above stated which endanger the life, safety, or normal development of children. Comprehensive program against child abuse, exploitation, and discrimination refers to the coordinated program of services and facilities to protect the children against child prostitution and other sexual abuse, child trafficking, obscene publications and indecent shows, other acts of abuses, and circumstances which threaten or endanger the survival and normal development of children. Cited programs and laws for child protection. Republic, 76, Republic Act 7610 is an act providing for stronger deterrence and special protection against child abuse, exploitation, and discrimination. Mandates the um, DSWD and the Department of Justice in coordination other with other government agencies and the private sector concerned to come up with a comprehensive program to protect children against child prostitution and other sexual abuse, child trafficking, obscene publications and indecent shows or other acts of abuse and circumstances which endanger survival and normal development. Republic Act 7610 was amended by Republic Act 9231 and further amended by Republic Act 11648, which provides for the stronger protection against rape and sexual exploitation and abuse, which mandated the increasing of, for the age of the, for determining the commission of statutory rape. Now let's go to the child prostitution and other sexual abuse in Section 5. Section 5B, Republic Act of the Republic Act 7610 was amended by Republic Act 11648. Section 5, child prostitution and other sexual abuse with children, whether male or female, who for money, profit, or any other consideration or due to the coercion or influence of any adult, syndicate, or group indulge in sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct are deemed to be children exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse who are deemed to be children exploited in the prostitution and other sexual abuse. Children, whether male or female, who for money, profit, or other consideration, or due to coercion or influence of adult syndicated group, indulge in sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct. The penalty of reclusion temporal in its medium period to reclusion perpetua shall be imposed upon the following. Who may be liable? Those who are engaged in or promote, facil promote, facilitate, or induce child, pro child prostitution, which includes but are not limited to the following. Acting as procurer of a child prostitute, inducing a person to be a client of a child prostitute, taking advantage of influence or relationship to procure, to procure a child as a prostitute, Threatening or using violence towards a child to engage him as a prostitute. Giving monetary consideration, pecuniary benefit to a child. Those who commit the act of sexual intercourse, lascivious conduct with a child exploited in prostitution or subjected to other sexual abuse provided that when the victim is under 16 years of age, the perpetrator shall be prosecuted under Article 325, Paragraph 3 for rape and Article 336 under the revised penal code for rape or lascivious conduct, as the case may be. What is lascivious conduct? It means the intentional touching, either directly or through clothing, 
of the genitalia, anus, groin, breast, inner thigh, or buttocks, or any act of lewdness done with the force or intimidation, fraudulent machination, or grave abuse of authority, or where the offended party is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious with intent to abuse, humiliate, harass, degrade the child, or arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person, bestiality, masturbation, lascivious exhibition of the genitals, or pubic area of a person. Uh, those who derive profit or advantage therefrom, whether as manager or owner of the establishment, where the prostitution takes place or of the sauna, disco, bar, resort, place of entertainment or, in, or establishment, serving as a cover or which engages in prostitution in addition to the activity for which the license has been issued to said establishment. Republic Act 11648, Section 3, Amendment of Section 5 of Republic Act 7610. Section 5, child prostitution and other sexual abuse. Children, whether male or female, who for money, profit, or any other consideration or due to the coercion or influence of any adult, syndicate, or group indulged in sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct are deemed to be children exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse. Paragraph B, those who commit the act of sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct with a child exploited in prostitution or subjected to other sexual abuse provided that when the victim is under 16 years of age, the perpetrator shall be prosecuted under Article 335, Paragraph 3, for rape and Article 336 of Act Number 3815, as amended, otherwise known as the Revised Penal Code, for rape or lascivious conduct, as the case may be. Provided that the penalty for lascivious conduct when the victim is under 16 years of age shall be reclusion temporal in its medium period. Let me discuss the attempt to commit child prostitution. So, this lies or this part of the report answers the question whether there is such a crime called attempt to child prostitution and uh, whether um, there's a penalty for that. So, Section 6 um, answers that yes, there's such a thing as attempt to commit child prostitution. And there is an attempt to commit child prostitution under Section 5, Paragraph A hereof, when any person who, not being a relative of a child, ibig sabi hindi ka ano ano ng isang bata, is found alone with the said child inside the room or cubicle of a house, an inn, hotel, motel, pension house, a portal, or other similar establishments, vessel, vehicle, or any other hidden or secluded area under circumstances which would lead a reasonable person to believe that the child is about to be exploited in prostitu prostitution and other sexual abuse. Ibig, ibig sabihin na to, um, there's this um, idea in mind that that child is about to be exploited, though hindi pa na perform yung actual prostitution or actual exploitation. But then again, if uh, that child was found with a non relative, meaning a stranger in these areas, no, we have now the idea that um, it might lead to an attempt to commit child prostitution. And to continue, paragraph B, it says here in section 5, uh, when any person is receiving services from a child in a sauna parlor or bath, massage clinic, health club, and other similar establishments. And now, um, this part of the article 6, uh, the penalty of that attempt to commit child prostitution. It says here, a penalty lower by 2 degrees than that prescribed from the consummated felony under Section 5 hereof shall be opposed, imposed upon the principles of the attempt to commit the crime of child prostitution under this Act or in the proper case under the revised penal code. So now, let's talk about child trafficking. This is under Section 7 or of RA 7610 and it is also amended by RA 11648. Who is guilty of child trafficking? Any person who shall engage in trading and dealing with children, including but not limited, limited to the act of buying and selling of a child for money or for any other consideration or barter, shall suffer the penalty 
of reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua. The penalty shall be imposed in its maximum period naman when the victim is under 12 years of age. So now let's compare this one with the amendment in RA 11648. Actually, the same lang rin naman ang definition of a person or who is guilty of child trafficking and um, same lang din yung penalty for it, uh, reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua. But then, there's a difference on the uh, age of um, a child that is uh, trafficked. No? So, if in the uh, RA 7610, under 12 years of age, so what RA 11648 naman, it's now raised to under 16 years of age. So, to simplify this, I made a table of ano yung similarities and differences of RA 7610 Section 7 and RA 11648 uh, Section 7. Um, Dito makikita natin no, that the only difference is uh, the the victim's age before 7610 uh, under 12 years of age and that already leads to a uh, maximum period of reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua but then now no it's already raised to under 16 years of age so now let's talk about um attempt to commit child trafficking and uh, is there such a thing if there is what is the penalty for it so ra 7610 section 8 says here that there is an attempt to commit child trafficking under section 7 when a child travels alone to a foreign country without any valid reason and without clearance issued by the dswd or written permit or justification from the child's parents or legal guardian. Another, when a person, agency, establishment, or child caring institution recruits women or couples to bear children for the purpose of child trafficking. Or, letter D, when a doctor, hospital, or clinic official or employee, nurse, midwife, local civil registrar, or any other person simulates birth for the purpose of child trafficking. And E, when a person engages in the act of finding children, kumbaga scouting, no? Among low-income families, hospitals, clinics, nurseries, daycare centers, or other child-bearing institutions who can be offered for the purpose of child trafficking. And um, for that, no, we have a penalty which is two degrees lower than that prescribed for the consummated felony under sec Section 7 hereof shall be imposed upon the principles of the attempt to commit child trafficking under this act. And now, let's go to Section 9, which discusses obscene publications and indecent shows. Under Section 9, obscene publications and indecent shows, um, the people who are guilty for this one uh, are any persons who shall hire, employ, use, persuade, induce, or coerce a child to perform in obscene exhibitions and indecent shows, whether live or in video, or a model in obscene publications or pornographic materials, or to sell or distribute the said materials, shall suffer the penalty of prison mayor in its medium period. If the child used as a performer, subject, seller, distributor is below 12 years of age, the penalty shall be imposed in its maximum period. And now, uh, it says here no, in the next paragraph that any ascendant, guardian, or person entrusted in any capacity with the care of a child who shall cause and or allow such child to be employed or to participate in an obscene play, scene, act, movie or show, or in any other acts covered by this section, shall suffer naman the penalty of prison mayor in its medium period. So kahit pala um, related sa um, bata, yung isang person who committed this, no, he or she sh shall still be um, liable under this act. And now, um, let's proceed. 
RA 11648 Section 9 in obscene publications and indecent shows. The only difference is that um, it says here no, that uh, if the child used as a performer, subject, or seller, or distributor is under 18 years of age, the penalty shall be imposed in its maximum period. So again, to simplify this one, I made the table. Same meaning pa rin naman of what obscene publication and indecent shows uh, are. Same pa rin yung penalty niya, which is prison mayor in its medium period. And it becomes a uh, maximum period no, when the child used as a performer below 12 years of age. And ngayon, as it was amended, below 18 years of age na. Let me call again Ms. Joy T. Tombo for uh, the discussion of employment of children. Uh, now let's discuss employment of children, Section 12 of RA 7610, as amended by RA 9231. So Section 12, Section 12, um, employment of children, uh, this talks about children below 15 years of age. No, uh, they may be employed except for the under the following circumstances. So number one, uh, when a child works directly under the sole responsibility of his parents or legal guardian, or where only members of the employer's family are employed, provided, however, that his employment neither endangers his life, safety, and health and morals, nor impairs his normal development. Provided further that the parent or legal guardian shall provide the said minor child with a prescribed primary and or secondary education. So, kailangan pa rin na kahit nag-work yung child, uh, kailangan uh, patuloy yung kanyang uh, schooling. So, the, uh, the, gov the government encourages that. So, next is when a child's employment or participation in public and entertainment or information to cinema, theater, radio, or television is essential, provided the employment contract concluded by the child's parent or guardian with the express agreement of the child concerned, if possible, and the approval of the dole, provided that the following requirements in all instances are strictly complied with. So the first requirement should be that the employer must make sure no, or shall ensure the protection, health, safety, and morals of the child. And then another requirement is that the employer shall institute, institute measures to prevent the child's exploitation or discrimination, taking into account the system and the level of remuneration and the duration and arrangement of working time. And the employer shall formulate and implement subject to the approval of the supervision of the competent authorities a continuing program for training and skill acquisition of the child. So in the above exceptional cases where any such child may be employed, the employer shall first secure before engaging such child a work permit from the DOLE, which shall ensure observance of the fa of the above requirements. So the Department of Labor and Employment shall promulgate rules and regulations necessary for the effective implementation of this section. So ito lang yung uh, under section 12 so it's not very uh detailed you know and that is why uh there is an amendment so ra 9231 and providing for the elimination of the worst forms of child labor and affording stronger protection for the working child amending for this purpose republic act number 7610 as amended otherwise known as the special protection of children against child abuse exploitation and stream up. So, kaya nag-come up ng RA9231 in order to make uh, that particular section we discussed uh, previously uh, clearer, parang mas more detailed also. So, section the same I further added by adding new section. So, ito na yun. So, it says here, uh, section 2A, hours of work so providing Provided section 12 this act as amended, so specify na na a child below 15 years of age may be allowed to work for not more than 20 hours a week, provided that the work shall not be more than 4 hours at any given day. A child 15 years of age but below 18 shall not be allowed to work 
for more than eight hours a day and in no case beyond 40 hours a week. No child below 15 years of age shall be allowed to work between 8 o'clock in the evening uh, shall be allowed to work between 8 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning of the following day and no child between 15 years of age but below 18 shall be allowed to work between 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning of the following day. Ownership, usage, and administration of the working child's income. So as to the income of the working child, well, it says here the wages, salaries, and earnings, and other income shall belong to him or her in ownership and shall be set aside primarily for his or her support, education, or skills acquisition, and secondarily to the collective needs of the family. So not more than 20% lang ng income ng child ang pwede gamitin ng family no, for the collective needs. So the income of the working child and or the property acquired through the work of the child shall be administered by both parents. So kung wala in the absence or incapacity of either of the parents, the other parents shall administer the same. In case both parents are absent or incapacitated, the order of preference on parental authority as provided for under family code shall apply. Uh, Section 12C talks about the trust fund to preserve part of the working child's income. So the parent or legal guardian of a working child below 18 years of age shall set up a trust fund for at least 30% of the earnings of the child. whose wages and salaries from work and other income amount to at least 200,000 pesos annually for which he shall render a semi-annual accounting of the fund to the dollar in compliance with the provisions of the act. So the child shall have full control over the trust fund upon reaching the age of majority. So section 12b discusses the prohibition against worst forms of child labor. So no child be engaged in the worst forms of child labor. So these worst forms of child labor shall refer to any of the following. So number one, all forms of slavery as defined under the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003. So our practices similar to slavery such as sale and trafficking of children, death bondage and serfdom, and force or compulsory labor, including recruitment of the ch of children for use in armed conflict. So bawal yun. Number two, the use, procuring, offering, or exposing of a child for prostitution which includes yung mga pornography or pornographic performances. And the number three, use or procuring or offering of a child for Ill illegal or illicit activities, including production or trafficking of drugs no? and volatile su substances. Uh, these are prohibited by our existing laws. Four, work with by its nature or, or circumstances in which it is carried out is hazardous or likely to be harmful to the health, safety, or morals of children. Such that, uh, to go into details of those uh, no, uh, harm, harmful to health and safety. So number one, it says this or degrees or demean the intrinsic worth and dignity of a child as a human being. Next is ex exposure to physical, emotional, or sexual abuse or is found to be highly stressful psychologically or maybe or may prejudice morals or no, see performed underground underwater or at dangerous heights letter b involves the use of dangerous machinery equipment and tools such as power driven or explosive power actuated tools or expo exposes the child to physical danger such as but not limited to the dangerous feats of balancing physical strength or contortion or which requires the manual transport and heavy loads. Another is, it is performed in an unhealthy environment. So, may mga hazardous working conditions, no, like elements, substances, co-agents, or processes involving ionizing, radiation, fire, flammable substances, noxious components, and the like. Tapos, uh, it is also performed under particularly difficult conditions or may mga exposure to biological agents like bacteria, fungi, viruses, parasites, etc. And then it also involves the manufacturing and handling of explosives and other pyrotechnic products. So let's first discuss the case of Caballo versus people. 
No? So the short facts of this case is that in 1988, 23-year-old 23 Caballo had a sexual relationship with a minor, 17-year-old AAA. Eventually, AAA got pregnant and a case was subsequently filed against Caballo. So the RTC ruled that um, Caballo was guilty beyond reasonable doubt in violation of Section 10A, Article 6 of RA 7610. So in relation to Section 2 of the Rules on Child Abuses, Abuse cases. He was sentenced to suffer imprisonment for an indeterminate period ranging from Christian Correctional in its maximum period of four years, two months, and one day, as minimum to Christian Mayor in its minimum period of six years, eight months, and one day, as maximum. It also ordered the AAA moral damages in the amount of 50,000 pesos. But the Supreme Court uh, ruled. This way. So, first, there was a discussion on the Section 5B, Article 3 of RA 7610. This is instead of uh, the ruling of RTC, which was Section 10A. So, ang highlight ng Supreme Court is Section 5 under child prostitution and other sexual abuse. So, ch children, whether male or female, who for money or profit, and any other consideration are due to the coercion or influence of any adult syndicate or group indulging sexual intercourse or the civic conduct are deemed to be children exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse. The penalty of reclusion per temporary in its medium period to reclusion perpetual shall be imposed upon the following. So letter B lang ang highlight dito, which is those who commit the act of sexual intercourse or the civic conduct to the child exploited in prostitution or subject to other sexual abuse. Provided that when the victim is under 12 years of age, the perpetrator shall be pers pers prosecuted under Article 335, Paragraph 3 for rape, and Article 336 of Act Number 3815 as amended. The revised penal code for rape or lascivious conduct of the case may be provided that the penalty for lascivious conduct when the victim is under 12 years of age shall be reclusion temporal in its medium period. So uh, as determined uh, in the case of Olivares versus CA, Olivares, the elements of the foregoing offense are the following. So the, the accused commits the act of sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct. The said act is performed with the child exploited in prostitution or subject to other sexual abuse. And the child, whether male or female, is below 18 years of age. Uh, if you notice, in this case, uh, there is no such thing as prostitution. No? Pero ang hinahilight doon yung kaakibat na sexual abuse. So, the case also discussed the Angara Amendment. Angara Amendment states that is it, as it is presently worded, Section 5, Article 3 of RA 7610, provides that when a child indulges in sexual intercourse or any lascivious conduct due to the coercion or influence of any adult, the child is deemed to be a child exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse. In this manner, the law is able to act as a deterrent to quell all forms of abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, and discrimination against children, prejudicial as they are to their development. So in this case, uh, the court considered that Caballos are constituted coercion and influence because uh, AAA was a minor. So considering her age, she's considered a child under the law, not capable of fully understanding or knowing the import of her actions. So although Caballo also asserted that uh, AAA consented to the, to the sexual intercourse, but then the court said that that is immaterial because a child exploited in prostitution or subjected to other sexual abuse cannot validly give consent to sexual intercourse with another person. Uh, in fact, the court also highlighted that a child cannot give consent to a contract under our civil law. This is on the rationale that she can easily be a victim of fraud and she is not capable of fully understanding the nature or the import of her actions. You know? And so, uh, also, uh, the court highlighted that uh, Caballo's seniority, there is an age disparity uh, between both of them. 
So, uh, if disparity between an adult and a minor place the value in a stronger position over AAA as to enable him force his will no, on the minor. And then Caballos actions effectively constituted over overt acts of coercion and influence because Caballo in fact promised AAA uh, that he will marry her and also he assured her that uh, she will not get pregnant because uh, they would be or Caballo would be doing the withdrawal method. Uh, but then AAA got pregnant. And so with respect to the party's first sexual encounter, it is observed that the uh, unexpected manner in which uh, Caballo pursued AAA to her room, you know, uh, even when AAA uh, refused. So therefore, the court considered that there was really uh, an act of coercion and influence within the context of and so, she, uh, since AAA is deemed as a child exploited in this case, so the uh, second yung statement na child exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse really applied uh, to the uh, to this to this case. And so, the court ruled that uh, the Supreme Court ruled that Caballo would be uh, guilty. So the second case uh, discussed is also uh, Habalde versus People. Ian, Ray, Ann, Marco, and Nova were playing in school when, during the course of the game, Lynn touched Nova's shoulder, causing the latter to fall and wound her head. Nova's mother, Virginia Habalde, who was also a teacher in that school, rushed to the scene and allegedly slapped Lynn on his neck and choked him. So the RTC found Habalde guilty beyond reasonable doubt for violation of Section 10, Article 6 of RA Number 76, and otherwise known as the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, and Discrimination. The Supreme Court ruled that under the law which Habalde was charged, tried, and found guilty of violating is Section 10A, Article 6 of RA Number 2610. No, which states Section 10, uh, other acts of neglect, abuse, cruelty, or exploitation and other conditions prejudicial to the child for benefit. So it states any person who shall commit any other act of child abuse, cruelty, or exploitation, or to be responsible for other conditions prejudicial to the child's development, include, including those covered by Article 15 of PB number 603 as amended, but not covered by the RPC as amended shall suffer the penalty of prison mayor in its minimum period. However, the Supreme Court um, noted that the spontaneity, uh, spontaneity of the act of Cabalde against Lim is just a product of the instinctive reaction of a mother to rescue her own child from harm and danger, as manifested only by the mild abrasions, scratches, and scrapes, kumbaga, Di naman talaga sinadya. There is no intent to abuse the child. No? It was just um, uh, an instinct, instinctive uh, response, no? Because uh, she saw that her child was uh, in, injured. So in fine, the essential element of intent was not established with the prescribed degree of proof required for a successful prosecution. So the court ruled uh, Habalde. Uh, guilty beyond reasonable doubt of the crime of slight physical injuries lang, hindi na yung child abuse. Sentencing her to suffer the penalty of one day to ten days of arresto mayor. So that ends our report. Um, again, uh, thank you for listening. This is Joy Tombo along with my uh, classmates, Ms. Alicia Perez and Scarlett Ubinigracia.